evening, you guys. Tony here. It's Monday night, May the 24th. This is going to be my sixth episode of my I Saw a Miracle series, and um, it's entitled uh, God Had a Different Plan. I'm actually going to tell two, uh, two short stories um, that happened. But um, before I start, if there's anyone out there who's not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, who does not know whether or not they would go to heaven if they died or if they would go in the rapture when it came, Get saved now. We're not promised tomorrow, guys. It's um, The hour is late. Look around the world. See all the crazy things happened last year and this year, and you know that something is happening to the world. Something is wrong, and it is. The world is falling apart. It is. Uh, we are entering into a new dispensation, um, whereas we are right now in the dispensation of grace. We're about to enter into a, um, a, diff a different dispensation. It's going to be horrific a time period on earth of seven years that's going to be absolutely horrific called the tribulation days also called Daniel's 70th week it's called the day of Jacob's trouble and the day of the Lord some refer to it as so it's a, a great and terrible day of the Lord it's a um, the hour of temptation it's also referred to like I said it's seven years where the devil is coming down to the earth to set up a kingdom uh, for a short time and he's going to bring his minions with him and he's coming with wrath and power to deceive the world and uh, cause the world to worship him and take a mark of the beast. And without the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell, but also it will damn your soul. You will not be able to go to heaven. So you don't want to be here that period. You can get saved in the tribulation period, but it's going to be really, really hard, and you will likely die for your faith and be beheaded for Christ in the end. So get saved today. While, you, while there's time, there's steps in the description. Um, do it now, guys. Don't waste another, another minute. You can come as you are. You don't have to wait for any specific time or wait until you're doing better, until you feel better about it, or until you go to church. You don't need... Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. So he says, come to me as you are. So do it now. Um, also, there's something I wanted to add to the video that I made yesterday about the, uh, the clouds that, that look like... the cloud that looked like a dragon. Well, we were coming home from my wife's grandfather's memorial service. Um, he passed away at um, 96, almost 97. And um, he was a veteran, and he had a memorial service. They, was, they he had, a, um, you know, the, they fired the, you know, the whole nine yards. So anyways, we're coming back, and it was dusk. It was getting dark, and we saw the cloud that looked like a dragon. But it was interesting that um, I've been watching a lot of people who are saying that uh, Memorial Day is a high watch day. Um, for a bunch of reasons and um, I just thought it was interesting and I'm pretty sure the hourly watch is talking about this day for a lot of reasons um, go check out some of the other watchmen if, if you want to know the details but the point is um, the 31st is Memorial Day and June the 1st is when they're supposed to do the alien disclosure or sometime in June I've heard different stories I heard that it was June 1st and I heard it was middle to late June but um, the last thing I heard was actually June the 1st. So it's interesting because we're looking at May the 31st as Memorial Day being a high watch rapture day. And then the very next day is alien disclosure, which could herald in the Antichrist. It could herald in the, the UFO, in fake, the fake alien invasion that I believe is coming. It could all come. This What I saw could have been a sign. And what was interesting is when I posted that, that video, uh, lots of people started sending comments that they've also seen these uh, look like cartoonish dragons in the sky, in the clouds. You know, of course they're clouds. But, um, you know, what does it mean? Well, I believe it means that, that that day is quickly approaching when the devil is cast out of heaven with his minions to the earth. And, of course, we know that we've got to be out of here before the devil is, or the Antichrist is revealed. So um, I, still kind of, um, I still kind of believe that we're going to go up as he's coming down. So um, I don't think we'll ever actually, see, we may not, we may see some UFOs coming down, I don't know, or we may see some, something happening, but in my heart of hearts, I believe the whole purpose of us being harpazoed and snatched away is because the devil's coming down, and I've always believed that. So anyways, um, let's get on to the story. All right, the first story is um, when I was working in, um, I worked in a place where they recycled antifreeze. And uh, they did other recycling stuff, but um, they had a lot of tanker trucks came in, 
and um, I would have to climb up on the tanker trucks and hook up an air hose so that we could build up pressure in the tanker truck to, to, to basically to get all the liquid out, you know, to pump the liquid out. That's how we did it with air. We pushed it out with air. And um, behind me, okay, when I, I was going up the ladder on the side of the tanker truck. This, you know, I don't know, about 12 feet high or better, maybe more. But um, anyways, it's up there. And um, this was before I had my knees replaced, so my knees were bad, and um, I, I didn't have a good footing, and they're already, like I say, my knees were already messed up, and they were weak, and it was slippery, too, from just the film that was in the air from all the antifreeze, that was the steam that was coming out of the tanks where we were, um, you know, making, this, cleaning the stuff out, and anyways, um, there's a rail behind me, um, just a, a handrail, you know, a little yellow handrail, about three, four foot high, whatever, about four foot high, I guess, three, four foot high. And um, the, the rail was, uh, was actually blocking the sump where these tanks were. These tanks were like 20, 25, 26,000 gallon tanks lined up in a row. And it was a great big sump, a big old pit down there where those things sit. And that rail was right there um, in front of it. And the basically the trucks were back into the building. I mean, literally, you know, I'm talking uh, maybe not that, not that little space, but I can't screen it wide enough, but probably about um, three foot, three, four foot of clearance between the truck and the rail. So there wasn't much clearance at all. So you can imagine I'm climbing up the side of the tanker truck and my back is facing that rail. And I get up almost to the top and I slipped and I fell backwards like this. And I fell completely backwards looking up at the sky, I mean at the ceiling. And um, I just... I mean, the only place that I could have fallen was on that rail. And that rail, if I had fell from that height, it would have broke my back in half. I mean, I would have been, if I survived it at all, I would have been ruined. It would have broke me in half. And um, as I'm falling, I'm just thinking, this is it. Uh, you know, and I says, oh, God, this is it. You know, because, I mean, and, and it seems like every time I have a, an incident where I feel like it's, you know, th there's nothing I can do, I scream out to God. I, oh, God. And, you know, that's what I did with my eyes closed. I didn't want to have my eyes open when I hit this rail, you know, just, you know, because I, I didn't know if it was, I was even going to live through it. But it was crazy because when I first fell, I was looking up at the ceiling, falling backwards, and I felt myself, and my orientation was going back, 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 back. It wasn't going straight down. But just at the very moment when I'm thinking that I'm about to hit the rail, and this is it, suddenly my feet hit the ground, and my arms hit the handrail and my arm basically straddled the handrail with both my, my arms like that and my feet on the ground so basically I didn't get hurt at all I caught myself with the weight of my feet and my arms it kept from hurting my knees and, and, and it's impossible I mean obviously God had something to do with this but when I slipped and fell the truck driver was standing at the front of the truck he was getting something out of the toolbox right there at the front of the, uh, or the back of the rig, but the front of the, you know, the tanker. Um, and I, I don't know, I guess he was getting hoses out or, or connectors out. Or so he was doing something there. And I remember clearly when I was climbing up the thing, he was standing there and I slipped and fell and all that happened. And then when I, when I landed, I look it over, he's gone. And I went running around to the, uh, to found him on the other side of the truck. I said, did you see what just happened? He says, no. What do you mean? <laughs> and um, I told him what happened. He says, no, I've been over here for, you know, a few minutes. I said, no, you were just standing over here. He says, no, I, I was over here. So he, he didn't see it, <laughs> basically. Um, that, that alone is impossible. But the fact that I should have been broken in half and I should be dead or completely paralyzed is, is God. It's all God. It's a, it's a miracle. And... Um, that, that's uh, that, many times God has rescued me in, the, in a moment. No, I mean, with, with in a moment, in, a, in just a second, when something was about to happen. Uh, there's been many times when I should have hit head on with someone, you know, in another lane. It's just so many things have happened in my life, guys. And like I said, I can't even remember most of them. So many things happened, but um, this was one time that is undeniably. And all, I mean, all. All of them are undeniably God. I mean, I believe God has been taking care of me, and I believe He takes care of all the people that love Him, and and, and you know that accept Christ, and that, you know there's a hedge of protection around a Christian that believes in Jesus. And um, this was amazing. 
This was amazing. Now, I've got another story that's amazing, too. Now, this was actually the only, now, this is um, actually what my brother said. My oldest brother, Jack, passed away in 2018. Not, uh, all my, my brothers were older than me. Kenny was older than me. He was nine years older than me, but Jack was 11 years older than me. He died in 2018. And um, years ago, he lived down at the beach, and um, I was living in an apartment, and um this was weird, but I had this really cheap answering machine that I had bought at Walmart or somewhere. It was like a $25 machine, maybe even cheaper than that. I can't even remember. It was cheap. And all it did, it just had, um, it had, it didn't have a tape. You couldn't put a tape in it. It was digital. And the only thing this thing would do is you could leave a, a recording on there the, up to like 10 seconds. or might have been, yeah, about 10 seconds. And then it could receive a message up to like 30 seconds, maybe as long as a minute, but I think it was just 30 seconds. And um, it had no call-out features. It had never, no other kinds of recording features other than, like I say, that, that rec it would record incoming calls. It couldn't call out is what I'm saying. It just couldn't do that. And if somebody called, the light would flash, and it would tell you. Um, I think it would flash, like, however many numbers had called. It would, like, if it was just one, it would just flash, beep, beep. If it was two, it would go, beep, 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 beep. If it was three, it would go, did 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 something like that. It was something weird. But anyways, I come home one night. Now, um, well, I come home and it was flashing. And when I um, pushed the button to play the recording, the only thing I heard was, Bing! it was like it was like I was listening on the phone after I dialed somebody's number. That's what it sounded like. And um, it was ringing, and my brother Jack picks up the phone and he says, Hello? Hello? And I'm just standing there and just like, What in the world? He says, hello again. Then he clicked and he hangs the phone up. And so I'm like, whoa, that's weird. You see, because Jack lives in a hotel, or not a hotel, but a motel. Well, maybe a hotel. I can't remember now. But anyways, it was might have been a cheap hotel. But he was living at the beach in a hotel, a motel. And all I do know is that you can't call his room. This particular place, you had to call the front desk, and you would have to... Um, you would actually have. Sorry, guys, I got interrupted by a phone call. Um, trying to remember where I was at. So, um, so anyways, like I said, um, when I, when, it, when I pushed a button on the answer machine, it started sound like it was ringing, like it was calling somebody. My brother answered. He's like, "Hello, hello, hello." He finally hung up. Uh, he finally hung up, and so um, I'm sitting here thinking that don't make no sense. I'm like, it sounded like my answer machine called him, which is. It, it, it's imp I'll tell you why it's impossible because they got uh, this apart. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, this hotel they have uh, or motel, whatever it was. They had a you have to call the office and they have to connect you to the room. They don't. I know some places actually have a number where you could actually call the room. I think, but this one didn't. Okay, this one you literally had to call the office and have them uh, tell them what room you wanted. They had to connect you to the room every time. So somehow my answer machine or my phone or whatever. While I was gone, while we were gone, we were out shopping, and um, there was no one at home. Somehow it called his phone at his, at his hotel, motel. Anyways, I called him up and I says, I said, Jack, um, I had this something weird happen. I said I called, I mean I got home and pressed the button on my answer machine. It sounded like, it sounded like the phone was ringing, and and then you answered the phone and said hello, hello, and then hung up. He said Tony. He said, that's crazy. I said, what? He said, let me tell you what happened. He said, I was sitting there. I was about to walk up to the store because his wife was at work, and she worked at night. And he lived about 10 minutes away from the nearest store, like I said, down at the beach. And he was going to walk down to the store. And he says that right when he was getting ready, fixing to leave, he said the phone rung. Well, he was living there with his wife alone. All his kids, and they were in their 20s, were living back in, um, in North Carolina. I mean, you know, in um, the Gastonia area. So he, um, they were all, like I say, all living, they were all grown up, but they were all still young, and, you know, they were always calling him and stuff. And he says that, um, he says, when the phone rang like that and nobody was on the other side, I thought one of my kids might have been trying to call. So it, it, it scared me, so I didn't leave. I sat and waited to see if they would call back. And um, then about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, he says that um, he heard, ambulances, sirens, you know, just sirens everywhere, police. 
And um, he found out later on that night that about the exact time that he would have been at the store if he had left when he left, he says, someone came and robbed the store and killed several people out in the parking lot. Or a couple people. Somebody got killed. I don't know if it's several people. It seemed like he said several, but it may have. But I don't know how many people. But there was at least one person I know was shot, fatally shot, maybe more. The point is, he would have been there at that very time, he said. And then when I told him about, you know, it was from my phone, he says, he says, there's no way your answer machine could have called my, my hotel or my room, I mean, because you would have had to, it would have had to call the office and, and, made a connection so he called the office and asked if if anybody had called and asked for his room number and they says no no one's calling up here so he said that's impossible he said there's no way that you're you that you could even call my phone in my room unless it went through the switchboard or whatever through the office he said there's certainly no way your answer machine or your phone going to call me when you're not there and so um if he had have left and went to the store he could have been shot and killed he would have been right in the middle of that skirmish or whatever it was. So um, that was the one miracle that my brother said that he, you know, because he was the he was a doubting Thomas that always says, I had never seen miracles. He was always doubting. He says, you know, I don't even know if I believe in God. He said, I, I never seen nothing. You know, he was he was that person. And um, we used to get into long conversations, and sometimes I used to think he would just try to get try to get to me by by saying stuff like that. You know. That, they says that God let six million of his own people die, but he's going to pay your power bill. He's going to take care of you or whatever. So, But um, that's what he said that he contributed to the only miracle that he'd ever seen. But um, unbeknownst to him, it probably was a miracle, which I think he realized that it could have been, that he most likely was going to be in the middle of that, that, um, that situation, that he could have been killed. And so... Something was protecting him. Now, I understand my brother was saved when he was young, but um, his lifestyle was completely contrary. I tried my best to talk to him all the time and told him, and the last conversation that we ever had was, I said, Jack, uh, I said, this is literally the last conversation we had before he died, and, and um, I regret this, but um, you know, it was about a couple weeks after we talked that this happened, that um, he had a heart attack, but... Um, and died, but he says, uh, I says to him, I says, Jack, if you don't accept Jesus Christ before you die, you will stand in judgment of God. And now, now I understand my brother did get baptized when he was young, and supposedly he got saved. But I don't know that he did, and I hope he did. I think he did. But it's just one of those things, you know, where uh, I, I hope that if, if he didn't, that he did before he, he, he died. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm hoping, because Jack wasn't a bad person. But he just, he was a doubting Thomas. And that doesn't, being a doubting Thomas isn't going to cause you to lose your your, your salvation if you're saved. So, uh, I mean, I just have to take him for his word that he was saved. But um, but he sure liked to argue about it. He sure liked to argue that. And um, it really used to hurt my feelings sometimes. But, but, you know, I love my brother. And, you know, we did have some good conversations. You know, he was into the, uh, believed in the alien stuff and life on other planets, ancient alien stuff. And. But anyways, um, like I said, that was a, it was, I believe that that was a miracle. I believe that, that he probably was spared from getting killed early, you know, cause he, that was years ago. He lived till he was 56, but, um, it was probably in his early forties when that happened. But anyways, guys, um, sorry about the, uh, interruption there. It kind of messed up my, my, my flow, but anyways, um, Hope you get something out of this, guys, and are blessed by it. Because I mean, there are miracles do happen, and that's why I'm doing these series. Because I have seen many in my lifetime, and uh, I've seen lots of crazy stuff. And I know that God has been showing me these things and allowing these things to happen and protecting me, but for a reason. And I believe that it's um, it's 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 because at a very early age, God was calling me and telling me and giving me, you know, and preparing me for the day when I would need to warn the people about these things that are coming, this, this cataclysm, you know, that's why I named my, my channel, the cataclysm, you know, I mean, I want to spread seeds and get people to come to Christ, but I also want to warn them about this, this tribulation that's coming. So that's what my, my channel is, is dedicated to is spreading the gospel and warning people that this time is coming. Now I'm not the best, um, you know, news watcher, 
you know, I try to keep an eye out, and um, I know there's stuff happening in Israel right now, guys. Uh, all I want to, all I can really do is, is tell you that something is about to happen very soon, and um, you need to be alert, be awake, and be watching. Just paying attention, because um, it's easy to get caught up in the, um, in the things of this world and just completely be oblivious to what's going on in the spiritual world. And right now, we need to be watching like never before, spreading seeds like never before, and warning people that. That, um, that the uh, tribulation days is approaching, and um, we need to be ready for Jesus when he comes so we can so we can leave with him when he comes. We need to get saved and um, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today before it's too late. Steps in the description. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful night, and I will see you on the next video. Love you all. Good night. Bye.